Michael Schumacher is a German former Formula One race car driver who was considered one of the greatest F1 drivers of all time. He began racing at a pretty young age, and by the end of his career, he had won a total of seven world championships. He is also one of the highest paid athletes of all time. Even outside of the race car, he can easily earn $50 million or more per year just from endorsements. The career and life of Michael Schumacher is both fascinating and tragic. Michael Schumacher is known for many achievements during his 16 years in the sport. Seven world titles, 91 wins, 68 poles, 154 podiums, 1,369 points. That's why he's mentioned as the greatest F1 driver of all time. In fact, he is the man who single-handedly took the modest Benetton team to glory and even resurrected the grand team of Ferrari after their long title drought of 20 years. Schumacher made his debut at the Belgian Grand Prix in 1991 with the Jordan Grand Prix team. Even in his debut, he ended up getting recognition considering he qualified seventh on the grid, even though he had barely tested the car before the race and he had never driven on the track before. The race ended with his clutch being burnt out, but it was the start of his stardom. Controversy broke out as Schumacher moved over to Benetton for the very next race, even though he already had an agreement with Jordan. He finished the 1991 season with Benetton and remained with them through 1995. In 1992, his second season, he scored his maiden win at Spa, the same track where he made his debut a year earlier. Schumacher finished the year third in the championship with 53 points. In 1993, he picked up his second career win at the Portuguese Grand Prix, but finished fourth in the Drivers' Championship. 1994 was bittersweet, with the passing of three-time world champion Ayrton Senna at the San Marino Grand Prix. During the race, Senna was just ahead of Schumacher before he crashed at the track's Tamburello corner. Not knowing Senna's condition, the race resumed after a brief stoppage and concluded with Schumacher winning. It wasn't until hours later that it was announced that Senna had passed away. This was devastating news for Schumacher, and he stayed away from the funeral because of the fear of backlash from the Brazilian public. In fact, he even considered retirement. But the Benetton team persuaded him to stay, and he went on to win three of his next four races. He was in full control of the championship, until he ended up being disqualified at the British Grand Prix for overtaking Damon Hill on the formation lap. It got even worse when he was also disqualified from the Belgian Grand Prix for technical infringement. That meant he only had a one-point lead on Hill going into the final race in Adelaide. In that race, on lap 36, Schumacher ran wide, and when he came back on the track, Hill tried to dive down the inside to make an attempt to pass, but Schumacher turned in as the two collided and went into the tire wall. This led to both cars retiring and Schumacher winning his first F1 championship. In 1995, Schumacher made it back-to-back -back titles and became the youngest two-time world champion in F1 history while helping Benetton to win the Constructors' Championship. Schumacher moved to Ferrari in 1996. He embraced the challenge of this change because Ferrari was a struggling team, having won only two races in six seasons and no championships since 1979. Even though the team was in a pretty horrific state at the time, Schumacher gave it a completely new look and ended up winning three races in his first season with the team. Things got better in 1997 when he took five wins and went into the final round one point ahead of Jacques Villeneuve. But a controversial collision got the best of him, and he ended up losing out to Villeneuve and finished second place in the championship. The 1998 season brought upon more close calls for Schumacher, when he ended up getting six wins and a total of 11 podiums, but lost the championship to Mika Hakkinen in a McLaren. 
The whole F1 world thought he'd end up with a title in 1999, but he ended up breaking his leg in a crash in Silverstone, which only left his teammate, Eddie Irvine, to try winning the title, but came up short. However, the combined efforts of Schumacher and Irvine in 1999 won Ferrari the Constructors' Championship. Things started off well in 2000, when Schumacher won the first three races of the season. But due to a mid-season slump, where he had to retire from three straight races, the championship came down to the final race at the Japanese Grand Prix. Schumacher started on pole, but it was a back-and-forth affair between Schumacher and Hakkinen all race. In the end, a quicker pit stop got Schumacher the lead for good, securing his third world championship and making him the first driver since 1979 to win a title with Ferrari. The championship in 2000 set up a five-year run of dominance for Schumacher and Ferrari, winning titles in 2001, 2002, 2003, and 2004. Along the way, Schumacher set or tied numerous records, including the most wins in a season, total career wins, and most career titles. All good things do come to an end. In the 2005 season, his car was still pretty fast, but new tire rules implemented for the season put Ferrari at a disadvantage. The 2005 title went to Fernando Alonso, with Schumacher finishing third. This led to retirement rumors, but Schumacher went into the 2006 season equaling Ayrton Senna's pole position record at the opening race of the season at Bahrain, and three rounds later, he claimed the record at the San Marino Grand Prix with his 66th career pole. Midway through the season, Schumacher announced that he would retire at the end of the 2006 season. As the season went on, he began to challenge for the championship even after being down 25 points to the reigning champion Alonso. The dream scenario would be to end his career as a world champion, but sadly, an engine failure in Japan shattered his dreams, and he lost the title to Alonso. He returned to F1 in 2010 for three more years with Mercedes, but didn't score another title. On December 29th in 2013, Schumacher was skiing with his then 14-year-old son Mick in the French Alps when he hit his head on a rock and suffered serious head injuries even though he was wearing a helmet. After numerous surgeries and rehabilitation efforts, he was finally sent home. There were rumors that he was paralyzed and that he is unable to communicate. However, his family has been very private about the situation so very little is actually known about his current state and condition. In 2020, Lewis Hamilton tied Schumacher with his seventh world championship, and while records are meant to be broken, the remarkable career and legacy of Michael Schumacher will never be forgotten. If you enjoyed the video, give it a big thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Also, press the bell icon so you never miss out on future uploads. And I'll see you guys next time. Till then, rev it up and have a great day.